What's up guys, Shane here from Deck 3D Printing and today we're going to check out some PETG from Pryline. So welcome back to another film review here on my channel, Fugitech 3D Printing. And today, as I said, I'm checking out some PETG, or PETG, from Pryline. I had already checked out their PLA filament, which you can check up here. And this is the second roll of a different type of filament that I'm going to check out. There's a lots of others I'm going to be looking at. But as I said before, this box is a very generic box that they use in China. So it's a Chinese filament. Not, I think the PLA was rebranded, so I don't know. But we'll see. Up here it tells you it's Pryline 3D printer filament. Manufactures Ice Stone Hong Kong Trading Company Limited. Made in China. And it gives you a little barcode down here. It tells you it's PETG. It's blue. And it's 1.75 millimeter filament. Which is exactly what I need. Let us dive in to the color. And here we go. It is the same spool as the PLA was in. And like I said, that kind of like diamond, that like 3D squarish looking uh, pattern on the spool and it's got the one little sticker on here telling you that it is PETG so I'm really going to be careful to make sure I don't print the wrong spool with the wrong settings because they look identical. I'm going to have to go basically on color. And then we have the spool and again this has the tail kind of coming through. Oh that is weird. Um, and then the top is right here cut through. This film is super duper rough and not perfectly smooth. Like it actually has like ripples going through. It almost feels not quite as bad, but when you when your filament runs through, say a Bowden system, it's probably the best one to talk about, and the extruder pushes your filament up through a Bowden tube, then out the hot end. Well, when you're done printing with that color, you pull it out, your extruder gears, they leave marks in the filament. As they pull the filament down through, they cut into it a little bit. That's kind of what this feels like, but all of it is that way, which is really weird. So I'm hoping this prints okay. I'm not gonna know until I throw it on. But it is a translucent blue, so there is that. We'll see if we put a couple layers down, if we can't do maybe three or four walls and eliminate the transparency of it, make it a little more opaque. We will see what happens. But again, the wine looks good. There's not much smell to it. I think it'll be okay. So let's throw this on a couple printers, watch some nice time lapses, and see how it turns out. All right, so the Pryline PETG worked out fairly well. Uh, on smaller things, it came out great. When I scaled up this vase, not so much, and I'll show you what ended up happening with that. I think the angles were just not conducive to PETG printing, as you're not really printing with either a high fan, or you're printing with low fan or no fan at all. A lot of people say no fan. It varies on who you talk to. I print with a low fan normally. Sometimes I'll print with no fan, uh, but normally it's just like 20, 30% just to give a little bit of cooling there to firm it up. But I was very impressed with how not stringy, least stringy, the, the filament was not stringy at all really at 240 degrees centigrade, which is what I needed to print this at. 230, it would start to skip a little bit. So I had to print this at 240. And everything out came out pretty good. Uh, again, without the cooling fan, you do get drooping with PETG, which isn't very good, but you take an X-Acto knife and kind of can clean that up. And uh, vase mode came out well, kind of did a little bit of solid model. Uh, a tiny whoop frame, which we're gonna look at. This was actually really nice comparison to the another PETG I'm testing out right now. And I'm working on some other things. So let's take a closer look and see where it worked and where it really didn't. Okay, so this is the Hubison X4 Tiny Whoop frame that I'm actually using right now. I'm printing it in a different PETG. But this one, straight off the build plate, look how clean this is. With the white background, you can see pretty much zero stringing on this. It's very impressed. I'm using the exact same settings I'm using with the other PETG. And man, this just came out so clean. And it's nice and strong. A little bit flexible as it should be with uh, PDG. It's not as rigid as PLA or ABS, but it does have some flexibility to it, which makes it nice and strong. This way, this is you know very impact resistant. This hits and will just keep on going. So if I'm to see how this you know works out with the tiny whoop as I crash it, which I always do. And if it works out well, I'm gonna print out a whole bunch of these so that I have it. But yeah, very impressed with how this worked out in such a small model. So then I just print out this like basically just a pen holder for your desk. 
And in this you can see, hopefully, where you can see kind of back here a little bit where it's focused, uh, there is some drooping and that is because there's no cooling fan normally used with PETG or again, low cooling fan. With PLA, you can make these overhangs without a problem because you have a high cooling fan. It's pretty much cooled as soon as it's extruded and you get nice clean overhangs. Not so much on this, but the overall smoothness of it is actually really good. I just need to clean up the overhangs on this and not a lot of string, a little bit of strings here and there but overall really, really nice. Again, bottom layer came out really well on glass with just some glue to hold that down. This was a long print because a lot of retractions in here. So I kind of figured this would be a good retraction test for this filament. If I can get this to work out well with all these retractions, I think I have the settings dialed in. So yeah, I like it. This little Bebop guy, I printed this in the Pryline PLA as well, which is like that super bright yellow. So this had support from the base plate. And again, for some reason, this one here wanted to have support, but I think it came out okay. It's got this like speaker kind of thing for its eye, a little triangle there. And each one of the sides have this a little circle on it there. Um, but yeah, so it's a kind of good to print over supports to see how that turned out, which it did well, as you can see there, there's no real drooping on there. It's fairly rounded as it should be. And there's a little bit of ghosting in it. That's the printer, not the filament. But yeah, I, I mean, this turned out well, 15% infill. This took quite a few hours because it prints slow at only 50 millimeters a second. So I mean, actually most of the time you're only printing like 40, but either way, it came out well. Then, bam, you can see I printed this giant honeycomb vase, uh, four bottom layers, which all came out well, and zero infill, no top layers, one perimeter. But you see here, it kind of had issues on these extreme overhangs on all of these honeycomb shapes. So I thought maybe it was my extrusion multiplier should be up a little bit more. I tried another one, I only made it up so much just to test it and it came out exactly the same. I just think that this model was not conducive for PETG at a scale this big, at least with the 0.4 nozzle. If I put on a 0.6 nozzle, or a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, I think you could easily make this happen, but with a 0.4, it's just not extruding enough filament to actually work out for those. So I went ahead and pulled it down to, whoop, there we go, 100%, and it came out absolutely perfect. No issues at all. Again, on the glass, four bottom layers, one perimeter, zero top, 0% 0 infill, vase mode was enabled in Simplify 3D, and it's got a nice shine to it, so this came out really well. And finally, these are actually parts to a trophy that I'm printing out for someone. Uh, they have a basketball coaches they want to give some trophies to. So this is actually the part of the trophy that I'm printing. Not all the trophies done yet. I'm still testing a lot of things and I'm testing with this filament and the filament is acting a little weird on this print. I don't know what it is. Um, here's one that I actually kind of finished up a little bit. So what's going on is everything's printing fine here, but then when it gets to this section here and here, it's the same on both of them. The retraction or whatever's going on there gets pretty rough and you see these got these little giblets on it and it's only in this like what three quarter inch of a section here and the exact same part up here. I don't know what's going on with that but the bottom is great, inside here is fine, the whole middle part here is great and this top inch is really nice. It's just this weird part in here, I don't know what's going on and I have it more or less dialed in. Uh, I think this is the most dialed in one I have. I think so. Yeah, I'm looking around. Yeah, this is the most dialed in one I have and it's just not working out so well. My extrusion multiplier is up to 1.0 on this to see if that fixed it. It did help a little bit, but not much at all. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is a settings thing. I, I don't know what else to try out with this, but it is giving me issues here where PLA worked out just fine with the same model. It must be a PETG thing. Not sure, but I'm working through it. Uh, once I kind of shave it down a little bit, it's really hard to tell here, I guess. Maybe a little bit of heat might help uh, get rid of that. So we'll see what ends up happening. But either way, that's my experience with this model and this filament. So a couple things with this PDG. Number one, I'm happy it's not clear because clear filament is honestly getting super old these days, especially with PDG. People need to start producing actually colored filament. There's no reason to be producing clear anymore. It's super boring and everyone does it. So kind of what's the point? Very low stringing, which I like, uh, at 240 degrees centigrade, which is on the higher end, or I guess mid-range or PETG, kind of depends on the brand. Most of the ones I print are between 230 and 245. 240 seems to be kind of like my golden number there for most of them. 
But yeah, very impressed, especially with this model, because other ones that I've tested with this model, super duper stringy, lots of retractions in here, all these islands that need to be done, things like that. And again, I was also very impressed with the way that it did the little Bebop guy and how it printed the three islands. No retraction, you know, I can't even see where the retraction happened on those layers. It just came out so well. So very impressed with that. Overall, I'd say it's above average for a PETG. Not the greatest I've ever used. Definitely not the worst I've ever seen. So it's above average. Again, I like it because it comes in colors, which is a big plus most companies don't. It is a translucent color. Not many people are, are producing an opaque, which I would like to see more of because I think there's more applications for that. But either way, it came out pretty good. So my disclaimer is this filament was sent to me by Pryline for the purpose of this review. No money was exchanged either way. The only thing I get out of this was the roll of filament to print with. I printed through about two thirds of it now and I'm still printing a little bit more of these uh, parts for the trophy, which I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually end up using this, but I'm still working on tuning it for just this model alone, working on that. So if you guys wanna try this film out, there'll be a full link to Amazon down below. And if you decide to use that, which I thank you, a little slice of your purchase will come my way. Also, you can update your bookmark and that way anything you purchase on Amazon, again, a small slice of that will come here to me, which I appreciate always. And that wraps it up. So thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video and you think this is helpful to you, please give it a big thumbs up. If not, thumbs down, talk in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you either way how you felt about the video. If you guys want to stay tuned on what's going on, make sure you're a subscriber. And if you want to get an email notification when new content comes out, ring that bell icon when you hit the subscribe button. If you guys want to support me financially on a monthly basis, right below me is going to be a Patreon link. You can donate dollar more on there. Lots of people on there seem to help me out, which I appreciate. If you want to just do a one-time deal or just buy me a coffee, help me buy some new studio lights or just a regular Streamlabs tip. And if you just want to go ahead and use my affiliate links, there's a bunch of bookmarks that you can set down below, various vendors down there. I appreciate it if you guys do that. And that wraps it up. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, happy printing.